In today's lecture, we will discuss the protein synthesis inhibitors. This lecture is going to be composed of uh, two parts. In the very first part, we'll talk about the introduction of the protein synthesis, how the protein is synthesized, and in the second part, we'll be talking about the classification of the protein synthesis inhibitors. Here, we'll talk about different classes that are actually going to inhibit the protein synthesis. So in order to make the lecture easy, I will first to tell you people about the protein synthesis, then we'll talk about the inhibitors, how the protein synthesis is going to be inhibited by the different classes of the protein synthesis inhibitors. So let's start the discussion from the protein synthesis. DNA, from the DNA, the messenger RNA will be synthesized by means of the transcription, okay? Now this messenger RNA will be having a message. This message will be forwarded towards the ribosomes. And this ribosome will then translate that message. By means of translation, you can see the protein synthesis will take place. Simple. DNA will synthesize messenger RNA. The messenger RNA will come to the ribosomes. Here in the ribosomes, then the proteins will be synthesized. Now, this particular region, from the messenger RNA to the protein, this is actually composed of the following steps. The very first step is initiation complex. Now, what is the initiation complex? Very simple. The synthesized, the newly synthesized messenger RNA, it is supposed to go and bind to the small unit of the ribosome. You guys know that the ribosomes are composed of one large and one small unit. The small one is named as 30S and the large one is named as 50S. So what will happen? The messenger RNA will target and will bind to the 30S subunit, the small one, 30S subunit. And it binds, in the meanwhile, the large subunit will come and will bind to this 30S subunit. Now what will happen is these all combine together. This will be given the name initiation complex. So we have 30S unit, 50S unit, and the messenger RNA. Now this is actually called as the initiation complex. Now what next you must remember is 50s, 30s assembly, this is done. Okay, in the initiation complex, this is, this is done actually somehow. Then attachment of the tRNA will take place. Where? Very simple. Our this large unit, which is named as 50s subunit, this contains three important regions. Named is A, P, and E region. Now, uh, first let us know why this A region is given the name A and P is given the name P and E is given the name E. Very simple, just concentrate. In the meanwhile, the initial complex is formed where the assembly of the 50s, 30s and the messenger RNA takes place. Okay. After that, the TNA is supposed to come and bind to this particular A region. What will happen? This TNA, now this TNA will be the activated TNA. Very simple. You know that uh, for the protein synthesis, we need amino acid. Simple logic, remember. One amino acid, another, another, another. So when amino acids chain together, they are supposed to make the peptide, polypeptide, and protein. So we need amino acids. Okay, simple, just concentrate that. Now, these amino acids are available actually in cytoplasm. Now, this ribosome is waiting for the those amino acids to chain them together to make a protein. Now, those amino acids are supposed to be activated first. First, the activation of amino acid will take place. Then, those activated amino acid will be carried by the tRNA. Now, here we have amino acid. Which one? Activated amino acid. Then, these activated amino acid will be carried by the tRNA, transfer RNA. Okay. Now, this tRNA is given the name is amino acyl tRNA. Why? Very simple. Because of this amino acid. When the amino acid gets activated, then this amino acid is called as amino acyl amino acid. Okay, why? Because it has now been activated. Simple activated amino acid when combines with the tRNA, then this is given the name is amino acyl tRNA, which is actually an active tRNA. Now, because of this particular name, amino acyl tRNA, this region is named as A region, which is present in the 50s unit. And uh, what will happen then? Attachment will take place of the tRNA at this A region. After that, what will next will happen is the codon anti codon pairing will take place. Very simple. tRNA is having the anti cord for the cords present on the messenger RNA. Remember, the DNA is supposed to give the message to the messenger RNA. This messenger RNA will take that message in the form of cords. These cords will be read by the transfer RNA. In the protein in the ribosomes, then the protein will be synthesized. So the transfer RNA is having actually anti-code. For what? For the codes. 
you can say codon anti codon pairing will take place here next after the attachment of the tRNA is the tRNA at least and the coding anti coding takes place pairing takes place after that what will happen then the translocation will happen means that this tRNA from the A site will be translocated into the P site from the P to the E now some texts they mention that this translocation is of the uh, those aminos which are actually going to pair up to produce the peptide then polypeptide simple just remember that whether it is the translocation of the tRNA or of the amino acids so what will happen after the pairing of the codon anti codon the next step is the translocation whether of the tRNA or of the amino acids simple so this translocation will happen this will be seen after the translocation the result will be peptidation means peptides will be formed or will be synthesized you know that one amino acid will be brought by one tRNA. Then the next amino acid will be brought by the next tRNA. Like this, every RNA is coming and the same, this every single RNA is supposed to place this particular amino acid here at the P region. Now everyone is bringing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now these amino acids are actually brought by every single tRNA. Suppose we have 5 tRNA, they will bring 5 amino acids and they will chain up together at P region. After that, the chain up, a point will come when their uh, chaining up will actually end. At that point, then our protein will be synthesized. And that will be functional to do its job. Simple. Now, what we need, we don't need these proteins to be synthesized. So then what we will do is simple. We will click towards the classification of the protein synthesis inhibitor we will take any of the class that is actually functional to inhibit the protein synthesis now remember we have different classes for each step for the initiation complex we have one class for the 50 30 assembly we have another class for attachment of the tRNA we can inhibit the attachment also we can inhibit the pairing also we can inhibit the translocation also we can inhibit the peptidation also means we can inhibit the protein synthesis at any step now which one or which class will inhibit the protein synthesis at which step now let's know that simple initiation complex i told you that this is the initiation complex when our uh, messenger rna gets attached with the 30s unit and with the 50s units means when they all attach together that is actually the initiation complex this initiation complex is actually inhibited by the what lenizolid simple if anyone asks from you that what is the mechanism of action of the nilozolid simple you are supposed to tell that it is actually going to inhibit the initiation complex and you guys know that what is initiation complex where uh, our subunits of the ribosomes and the messenger rna are actually uniting that is the initiation complex so this is inhibited by linozolid then we have 50s 30s assembly plus codon anti codon pairing now we have actually two mechanisms for the amino glycosides again to one mechanism amino glycosides are supposed to inhibit the codon anti codon pairing here we got the concept so the anti codes actually present on the tRNA are supposed to code with the codon of the mRNA so now this code pairing codon anti codon pairing is actually inhibited by amino glycosides according to another mechanism the amino glycosides are responsible to inhibit the 50 30s assembly so we have assembly one is initiation complex and the one is assembly initiation complex includes all 50s 30s units along with messenger rna whereas simple assembly is of the 50s 30s units now this assembly is inhibited by amino glycosides according to the next mechanism they are supposed to inhibit the pairing of the codon anti codon simple mechanisms so now what are actually the uh, amino glycosides very simple the amino glycosides that we have are the amikacin uh, canamycin neomycin etc so all the mycins remember not all of the mycins why because some of the mycins are also available in the uh, macrolides macrolides also include myosin while we are pronouncing the names of the macrolides so the names or the medications in the amino glycosides are amikacin canamycin and neomycin whereas in the macrolides we have erythromycin clarithromycin azithromycin so now you can hear very clearly that mycin in the names of the macrolides and as well in the names of the amino glycoside so in order to inhibit this particular confusion you are supposed to remember three or four from the amino glycosides and along with the macrolides so like this then you won't be confused while writing uh, any answer of the question or giving the answer to the examiner during the viva very simple come to the point so next one is attachment of the tRNA 
Now we have another point that is attachment of the tRNA. We can inhibit the tRNA attachment also. Now we have tetracyclines. Now in the tetracyclines, we have tetracyclines, oxytetracycline, doxycycline, minoxycycline. Now these all are actually what? Cyclines. So cyclines are actually responsible to inhibit the attachment of the tRNA to the 30S subunit. And according to the mechanism of action of tetracycline, they are supposed to inhibit the 30S unit. So when they inhibit the 30S unit here, at this point, then what will happen? Like this, they are actually supposed to inhibit the attachment of the tRNA at the air side. Very simple. Tetracycline is done. Then we have codon anti codon pairing. We got the concept that amino glycosides are responsible to inhibit the codon anti codon pairing and 50s 30s assembly. Now, coming towards the translocation, we have macrolides and ketolides. They are actually responsible to inhibit the translocation. I told you guys that the translocation is actually with respect to the transfer of the tRNA from the A to P to E sites or it is also sometimes specified for transfer of the peptide. So just guess what? Macrolides are actually responsible to inhibit the translocation. So whether it is about tRNA or the peptide. So then they won't be translocated. If they are not translocated, so what will happen then? Further chain up will not be done. Means there won't be any peptide formation. So if there is no translocation, then there is no any further step going to happen. Because we need tRNA to move further and to bring more amino acids and to chain them up together to synthesize the particular peptide, polypeptide protein. So in short, you can say by inhibiting the translocation, we are actually inhibiting the synthesis of the protein. So in short, macrolides, ketolides are responsible to inhibit the translocation. Coming towards the point that is peptidation. Now, here we have chloramphenicol. They are actually responsible to inhibit the peptidation. So, they actually inhibit the transpeptidase, which is responsible to chain up the amino acid. We have an enzyme named as transpeptidase, which is responsible to chain up amino acid together to produce, to synthesize the peptide and polypeptide. So, chloramphenicol is actually inhibiting the peptide synthesis, means they are inhibiting the protein synthesis. So, in short, again, coming towards all mechanisms, so now what is the mechanism of phenylazolate, aminoglycosides, tetracycline, macrolides, chloramphenicol, just in one line, just concentrate. Linozolate will inhibit the initiation complex, aminoglycosides will inhibit the assembly of 50s and 30s units of the ribosomes, along with that, they are inhibiting the codon anti codon pairing, and tetracyclines are actually responsible to inhibit the tRNA to attach at its A site, amino acyl site. And we have translocation inhibitors that are actually the macrolides. They're actually supposed to inhibit the translocation. And we have chloramphenicol, which are responsible to inhibit the peptidation. Or you can say the peptidase, transpeptidase enzyme, is actually inhibited. So I guess all of these are supposed to inhibit the protein synthesis that's why they are named as protein synthesis inhibitors and they are actually from the different classes class number one aminoglycoside tetracyclines macrolides ketolides and we have some other like chloramphenicol and linozolid these are actually placed in the miscellaneous class so actually we have how many classes number one aminoglycoside number two tetracycline number three macrolides ketolides and number four miscellaneous class in which we are actually placing the chloramphenicol and linozolid that's it from my side if still you have a confusion anywhere drop that in the comment box 